Virgo rising September 2020 directly relates to reining in any energy leaks you have, whether that is habits and spending and even the way that you manage your energy or whether that is people and circumstances that you're in that drain you of being focused. If you're excited to dive into what the astrology, what the tarot, and what the oracle deck cards have to say about you and your rising sign for this month, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. Before we get started, this video is brought to you by BetterHelp, an online counseling service connecting you with board certified licensed state therapists in under 24 hours. To get started, you can head to the link on the screen or below, fill out a quick survey, and get matched with your ideal counselor in under one day. You can receive licensed counseling through your phone, tablet, mobile device over means such as text, video chat, or phone call. BetterHelp is not a crisis hotline, but it does hold group in our sessions where you can meet with others in group sessions such as relationships or anxiety management altogether. BetterHelp costs $65 a week, though financial aid plans are available for those who qualify and is available worldwide. Wide. To get started, head to the link on screen or in the description to visit the BetterHelp website and take a quick survey to exactly examine your needs, what you are looking for, who would best match up with that, and then in under 24 hours you can be confirmed with your ideal therapist and get things started that way. Hi, I'm Marin. I am a professional astrologer, current philosophy student, and um... I'm just those two things today. I combine traditional Hellenistic astrological techniques with modern psychological counseling dynamics in order to provide grounded guidance. We start out on the first with Venus in your Cancer 11th house, opposing Saturn in your Capricorn 5th house. So what you're trying to do and get along with in terms of larger groups is at odds with what's expected of you on a romantic or a creative or a child-based level. That there are some restrictions in your more lighthearted, life-giving world with romance or children or creativity that are at odds with the social things that you're used to spending your time doing. On the second, there's a full moon in your Pisces seventh house. There's a full video on this full moon down below, but it is a culmination over the past few weeks around relationship matters, a release or a high point or a celebration of those matters with a deep personal relationship. On the third, Venus in your Cancer 11th house is squaring Mars in your Aries eighth house. So now some tensions around shared finances are leading to some issues with groups and friends and networking, that possibly some issues with money that you share with others or investments is leading to some issues in your social world, in people that you're connected with. And then on the 9th, Mars in your Aries 8th house is stationing retrograde. For the next few months, you, you can check this out in the video below, but you will be dealing with a rethinking of the way that you are connected to others, especially through deep financial resources. On the 9th through the 18th, the sun in your Virgo first house is trining Jupiter, Pluto, and, your, and Saturn in your Capricorn fifth house. So you yourself are on board with the responsibilities necessary in terms of children, creativity, or romance in your life, that you really are on board with putting in the work. But on the 11th, with the sun in your Virgo first house opposing Neptune in your Pisces seventh house, there is some confusion with a significant other or with a partner in any context that is not being clear or honest or confusing you around your decisions with these shared matters. Matters. On the 15th, Venus in your Leo 12th house is squaring Uranus and Taurus in your 9th house. This can directly relate to sudden spiritual awakening or sudden, sudden spiritual decision making um, because of a belief system change. It is kind of tense, it's not like a, a harmonious awakening, so watch out near the middle of the month for some sudden belief shifts that act lead you to make a make a certain decision to self-isolate even. On the 17th, there's a new moon in your Virgo first house. Full video on this is down below. This is a new beginning around your identity, your sense of self, any self-development that you're choosing to do. Great time to nail in these slow and steady steps to reaching a certain goal or evolvement for the next few weeks. On the 17th through the 23rd, Mercury in your Libra second house is squaring Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in your Capricorn fifth house. So wanting to spend money or be harmonious in the way that you are managing your finances is being challenged by what is being asked of you for your creative projects or with children or a partner. That you're wanting to do these beautiful things and spend your money in this way and that is at odds with some other 
other priorities in your life. And on the 26th with Mars and Aries in your 8th house, uh, or 24th with Mercury in your Libra 2nd house opposing Mars and Aries in your 8th house, I think the way that your money is connected to other people is just like really complicated and um, kind of messy this month. That if you're sharing finances with someone, they are, they are being troublesome or they are finding you troublesome with what you're wanting to spend your money on. On the 26th, Mars in your Aries 8th house is squaring Saturn in your Capricorn 5th house, continuing on this, this, um, moving forward with re you're reanalyzing your shared financial world because of some troubles or some boundaries in your relationship romantically or your children or creative world, which leads finally on the 29th to Saturn stationing direct in your Capricorn fifth house. Finally, there is a decision made around your fifth house of children, creativity, or romance, and what is going to be, you know, the law of the land, either, you know, for better or endings for worse or whatever. There's a decision made by the end of the month. So, so if you have any questions or any thoughts around what's coming up for you this month coming up, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your stories, your concerns, all that stuff, let me know below. And now with the astrology out of the way, let's move on to the tarot cards to see what tarot cards coming up. For Virgo Risings for this month, we have the Nine of Swords is a card about being mentally chained or being... It's a, it's a temporary but unpleasant state around accepting hard truths. So that this very, very, very well may be a month around accepting the hard truths around your relation to others, reining that in, or deciding to fully dive into letting others be the leader in this circumstance. Finally, let's pull a Witch's Wisdom Oracle deck card for a bit more guidance on this matter. Spirit, initiation. Could it be right to go alone or join a coven? What is shown? Spirit calls you to be true. The choice is yours. It's up to you. This magic does work with harm to none, so mote it be there, it is done. Definitively choosing between if it's more valuable to do it alone and to make those priorities only based on you, or whether compromising and playing into I'm someone who never compromises, so that's just my, my um, MO, but if it is more aligned for you to let up a bit of the reins and let others dictate the resources, then that might be what Spirit is calling you to do. If you enjoy this and you would like to dive deeper into your chart, my link for readings is below. I would love to read for you if you are interested in personal application of these things. And as well, if you're interested in learning the language of the cosmos and diving deep into this with the rationale and the grounded step-by-step -step of the why, the what, and the how this all works, check out my link for the Astrology Academy below. This is hours of course that I've put together over the past few months to really take you from interest and astrology enthusiast into astrology foundational grounded not expert because even I wouldn't call myself an expert it's a lifelong study but someone who is confident is centered and is able to read charts with ease and with ability um, in trusting their own astrological knowledge so if you're interested in taking a deep dive into all the components of astrology the Academy link is down below otherwise like subscribe do all the things and let me know any thoughts you have about this September sending so much love and I will see you in the next one but there is one